chapters 1 through 4 of the Gospel according to Mark. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Gospel according to Mark, from the New Testament in Modern Speech. Translated by Richard Francis Weymouth. Chapters 1 through 4. Chapter 1 The Beginning of the Good News of Jesus Christ, the Son of God As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, See, I am sending my messenger before thee, who will prepare thy way. The voice of one crying aloud, In the desert prepare a road for the Lord, make his highways straight. So John the baptizer came and was in the desert proclaiming a baptism of the penitent for forgiveness of sins. There went out to him people of all classes from Judea, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem of all ranks, and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, making open confession of their sins. As for John, his garment was of camel's hair, and he wore a loincloth of leather, and his food was locusts and wild honey. His announcement was, there is one coming after me mightier than I, one whose sandal strap I am unworthy to stoop down and unfasten. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee, and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And immediately on his coming up out of the water he saw an opening in the sky, and the Spirit, like a dove, coming down to him. And a voice came from the sky, saying, Thou art my Son, dearly loved, in thee is my delight. At once the Spirit impelled him to go out into the desert, where he remained for forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was among the wild beasts, but the angels waited upon him. Then, after John had been thrown into prison, Jesus came into Galilee proclaiming God's good news. The time has fully come, he said, and the kingdom of God is close at hand. Repent and believe this good news. One day, passing along the shore of the lake of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, Simon's brother, throwing their nets in the lake, for they were fishermen. Come and follow me, said Jesus, and I will make you fishers for men. At once they left their nets and followed him. Going on a little further, he saw James, the son of Zabdi, and his brother John. They also were in the boat, mending the nets, and he immediately called them. They therefore left their father Zabdi in the boat with the hired men, and went and followed him. So they came to Capernaum and on the next Sabbath he went to the synagogue and began to teach. The people listened with amazement to his teaching, for there was authority about it. It was very different from that of the scribes, when all at once, there in their synagogue, a man under the power of a foul spirit screamed out, What have you to do with us, Jesus the Nazarene? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, God's Holy One! But Jesus reprimanded him, saying, Silence! Come out of him! So the foul spirit, after throwing the man into convulsions, came out of him with a loud cry. And all were amazed and awestruck, so they began to ask one another, What does this mean? Here is a new sort of teaching, and a tone of authority, and even to foul spirits he issues orders, and they obey him! and his fame spread at once everywhere in all that part of Galilee. Then, on leaving the synagogue, they came at once, with James and John, to the house of Simon and Andrew. Now Simon's mother-in-law was ill in bed with a fever, and without delay they informed him about her. So he went to her, and taking her hand, he raised her to her feet. The fever left her, and she began to wait upon them. When it was evening after sunset, people came bringing him all who were sick and the demoniacs, and the whole town was assembled at the door. Then he cured numbers of people who were ill with various diseases, and he drove out many demons, not allowing the demons to speak, because they knew who he was. 
in the morning he rose early while it was still quite dark and leaving the house he went away to a solitary place and there prayed and simon and the others searched everywhere for him when they found him they said everyone is looking for you let us go elsewhere to the neighboring country towns he replied that i may proclaim my message there also because for that purpose i came from god and he went through all galilee preaching in the synagogues and expelling the demons one day there came a leper to jesus entreating him and pleading on his knees if you are willing he said you are able to cleanse me moved with pity jesus reached out his hand and touched him i am willing he said be cleansed the leprosy at once left him and he was cleansed jesus at once sent him away strictly charging him and saying be careful not to tell anyone but go and show yourself to the priest and for your purification present the offerings that moses appointed as evidence for them but the man when he went out began to tell everyone and to publish the matter abroad so that it was no longer possible for jesus to go openly into any town but he had to remain outside in unfrequented places where people came to him from all parts chapter two after some days he entered capernaum again and it soon became known that he was at home and such numbers of people came together that there was no longer room for them even round the door he was speaking his message to them when there came a party of people bringing a paralytic four men carrying him finding themselves unable however to bring him to jesus because of the crowd they untiled the roof just over his head and after clearing an opening they lowered the mat on which the paralytic was lying seeing their faith jesus said to the paralytic my son your sins are pardoned now there were some of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts why does this man use such words they said he is blaspheming who can pardon sins but one that is god at once perceiving by his spirit that they were reasoning within themselves jesus asked them why do you thus argue in your minds which is easier to say to this paralytic your sins are pardoned or to say rise take up your mat and walk but that you may know that the son of man has authority on earth to pardon sins he turned to the paralytic and said to you i say rise take up your mat and go home the man rose and immediately under the eyes of all took up his mat and went out so that they were all filled with astonishment gave the glory to god and said we never saw anything like this again he went out to the shore of the lake and the whole multitude kept coming to him and he taught them and as he passed by he saw levi the son of alphaeus sitting at the toll office and said to him follow me so he rose and followed him when he was sitting at table in levi's house a large number of tax-gatherers and notorious sinners were at table with jesus and his disciples for there were many such who habitually followed him but when the scribes of the pharisee sect saw him eating with the sinners and the tax-gatherers they said to his disciples he is eating and drinking with the tax-gatherers and sinners jesus heard the words and he said it is not the healthy who require a doctor but the sick i did not come to appeal to the righteous but to sinners now john's disciples and those of the pharisees were keeping a fast and they came and asked him how is it that john's disciples and those of the pharisees are fasting and yours are not can a wedding party fast while the bridegroom is among them replied jesus so long as they have the bridegroom with them fasting is impossible but a time will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them then they will fast no one mends an old garment with a piece of unshrunk cloth otherwise the patch put on would tear away from it the new from the old and a worse hole would be made and no one pours new wine into old wineskins otherwise the wine would burst the skins and both wine and skins would be lost 
new wine needs fresh skins. One Sabbath he was walking through the wheat fields when his disciples began to pluck the ears of wheat as they went. So the Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what on the Sabbath is unlawful? Have you never read, Jesus replied, what David did when the necessity arose, and he and his men were hungry? How he entered the house of God in the high priesthood of Abiathar, and ate the presented loaves, which none but the priests are allowed to eat, and gave some to his men also? And Jesus said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath, so that the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Chapter 3 At another time, when he went to the synagogue, there was a man there with one arm shriveled up. They closely watched him to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath, so as to have a charge to bring against him. "'Come forward,' said he to the man with the shriveled arm. Then he asked them, "'Are we allowed to do good on the Sabbath, or to do evil, to save a life, or to destroy one?' They remained silent. Grieved and indignant at the hardening of their hearts, he looked round on them with anger and said to the man, "'Stretch out your arm.' He stretched it out and the arm was completely restored. But no sooner had the Pharisees left the synagogue than they held a consultation with the Herodians against Jesus to devise some means of destroying him. Accordingly, Jesus withdrew with his disciples to the lake, and a vast crowd of people from Galilee followed him, and from Judea and Jerusalem and Idumea, and from beyond the Jordan, and from the district of Tyre and Sidon there came to him a vast crowd, hearing of all that he was doing. So he gave directions to his disciples to keep a small boat in constant attendance on him because of the throng, to prevent their crushing him. For he had cured many of the people, so that all who had any ailments pressed upon him to touch him. And the foul spirits, whenever they saw him, threw themselves down at his feet, screaming out, You are the Son of God! But he many a time checked them, forbidding them to say who he was. Then he went up the hill and those whom he himself chose, he called, and they came to him. He appointed twelve of them, that they might be with him, and that he might also send them to proclaim his message, with authority to expel the demons. These twelve were Simon, to whom he gave the surname of Peter, James the son of Zabdi, and John the brother of James, these two he surnamed Boanerges, that is, sons of thunder, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the man who also betrayed him. And he went into a house, but again the crowd assembled, so that there was no opportunity for them even to snatch a meal. Hearing of this, his relatives came to seize him by force, for they said, He is out of his mind! The scribes, too, who had come down from Jerusalem, said, He has Beelzebul in him! and it is by the power of the prince of the demons that he expels the demons. So he called them to him, and using figurative language, he appealed to them, saying, How is it possible for Satan to expel Satan? For if civil war breaks out in a kingdom, nothing can make that kingdom last, and if a family splits into parties, that family cannot continue. So if Satan has risen in arms and has made war upon himself, stand he cannot but meets his end. Nay, no one can go into a strong man's house and carry off his property, unless he first binds the strong man, and then he will plunder his house. In solemn truth I tell you that all their sins may be pardoned to the sons of men, and all their blasphemies, however they may have blasphemed. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit, he remains forever unabsolved. He is guilty of a sin of the ages. This was because they said, he is possessed by a foul spirit. By this time his mother and his brothers arrive, and standing outside they send a message to him to call him. Now a crowd was sitting round him, so they tell him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside inquiring for you. Who are my mother and my brothers? he replied. And, fixing his eyes on the people who were sitting round him in a circle, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For wherever there is one who has been obedient to God, there is my brother, my sister, and my mother. 
Chapter 4 Once more he began to teach by the side of the lake, and a vast multitude of people came together to listen to him. He therefore went on board the boat and sat there a little way from the land, and all the people were on the shore close to the water. Then he proceeded to teach them many lessons in figurative language, and in his teaching he said, Listen, the sower goes out to sow. As he sows, some of the seed falls by the wayside, and the birds come and peck it up. Some falls on the rocky ground where it finds but little earth, and it shoots up quickly because it has no depth of soil. But when the sun is risen, it is scorched, and through having no root it withers away. Some again falls among the thorns, and the thorns spring up and stifle it, so that it yields no crop. But some of the seed falls into good ground, and gives a return. It comes up and increases, and yields thirty, sixty, or a hundredfold. Listen, he added, every one who has ears to listen with. When he was alone, the twelve and the others who were about him requested him to explain his figurative language. To you, he replied, has been entrusted the secret truth concerning the kingdom of God, but to those others outside your number, all this is spoken in figurative language, that they may look and look but not see, and listen and listen but not understand, lest perchance they should return and be pardoned. Do you all miss the meaning of this parable? he added. How then will you understand the rest of my parables? What the sower sows is the message. Those who receive the seed by the wayside are those in whom the message is sown, but when they have heard it, Satan comes at once and carries away the message sown in them. In the same way, those who receive the seed on the rocky places are those who, when they have heard the message, at once accept it joyfully, but they have no root within them. They last for a time. Then, when suffering or persecution comes because of the message, they are immediately overthrown. Others there are who receive the seed among the thorns. These are they who have heard the message. But worldly cares and the deceitfulness of wealth and the excessive pursuit of other objects come in and stifle the message, and it becomes unfruitful. Those, on the other hand, who have received the seed on the good ground are all who hear the message and welcome it, and yield a return of thirty, sixty, or a hundredfold. He went on to say, is the lamp brought in in order to be put under the bushel or under the bed? Is it not rather in order that it may be placed on the lampstand? Why, there is nothing hidden except with a view to its being ultimately disclosed, nor has anything been made a secret, but that it may at last come to light. Listen, every one who has ears to listen with. He also said to them, Take care what you hear. With what measure you measure, it will be measured to you and that with interest. For those who have will have more given them, and from those who have not, even what they have will be taken away. Another saying of his was this, The kingdom of God is as if a man scattered seed over the ground. He spends days and nights, now awake, now asleep, while the seed sprouts and grows tall he knows not how. Of itself the land produces the crop, first the blade, then the ear, Afterwards, the perfect grain is seen in the ear. But no sooner is the crop ripe than he sends the reapers, because the time of harvest has come. Another saying of his was this, How are we to picture the kingdom of God? Or by what figure of speech shall we represent it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown in the earth, is the smallest of all the seeds in the world. Yet, when sown, it springs up and becomes larger than all the herbs, and throws out great branches so that the birds build under its shadow. With many such parables he used to speak the message to them according to their capacity for receiving it. But except in figurative language he spoke nothing to them, while to his own disciples he expounded everything in private. The same day, in the evening, he said to them, Let us cross to the other side. So they got away from the crowd, and took him, as he was, in the boat, and other boats accompanied him. But a heavy squall came on, and the waves were now dashing into the boat, so that it was fast filling. But he himself was in the stern, asleep, with his head on the cushion. So they woke him. Rabbi, they cried, is it nothing to you that we are drowning? 
So he roused himself and rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Silence! Be still! The wind sank, and a perfect calm set in. Why are you so timid? he asked. Have you still no faith? Then they were filled with terror and began to say to one another, Who is this then? For even wind and sea obey him. The end of chapters 1 through 4 of the Gospel according to Mark from the New Testament in Modern Speech translated by Richard Francis Weymouth Recording by Mark Penfold